Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. It's a good segue into the conclusion of the book of Job in the first reading. I, you know, I've been away on retreat the last couple days, uh, so I haven't really got you caught up. But you know the story of Job. It's a man that had everything and then lost everything. But in the process, he did not curse God. And even as his friends would come and visit Job, they would tell him, you know, repent, Job. You must have done something to upset God. You lost your livestock. You lost your family. You are covered in sores. You must have done something to upset God. And Job's like, I don't know what that is. But I think like us, Job had his breaking point. You know, I think sometimes we maybe we find ourselves in lives where things just pile up and then all of a sudden we just, we just lose it. We break down. We say enough is enough, God, <laughs> you know. So what does Job do? Job, at the end of the book, Job demands, he calls God to take the stand. Job puts God to a trial, a courtroom trial. And he wants God to give an answer for himself, an answer as to why Job is suffering so much. And so God appears in the thunder and the lightning and the clouds and the glory comes down. And you know what he says? He says, Job, and maybe you can, instead of Job, insert your name in here. You know, Job, were, were you there when I created the universe? Were you there when I formed the sky? Were you there when I formed the earth? What is he saying? What's God saying? You don't understand everything. You don't understand it. And that there's a lot more to life and there's a lot more to God than what we can comprehend. It's not the best answer, I think, that we would want but we have to understand that God's ways and the ways that he intercedes for us go so far behind, so far beyond that is, what our feeble imagination can, can think of. You know, so, so often when we pray and we pray and we ask for something, and often, you know, what we're asking is some sort of relief from suffering. We have like one solution to the problem. Like we have one way in which God can fix this. But God is infinite in knowledge, infinite in his ways. And so Job comes back to his senses. Job relents of this trial that he puts God through. He says, you know, I know you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be hindered. I have dealt with great things that I do not understand. And so the story ends on a happy note, you know, with Job kind of being restored back to everything that he has lost. But again, going back to what I said at the beginning of the gospel passage, um, you know, blessed are your eyes that see what you see. You know, for Job and for the people in ancient Israel, they didn't have Jesus Christ. They didn't, they didn't have the cross. They didn't understand that God was going to become man. God was going to enter into our sufferings. And God then was going to what, conquer death, conquer our sufferings, and promise us the resurrection and eternal life. That's why our eyes are blessed, because we have that fullness of knowledge, fullness of God's revelation in the person of Jesus Christ. But Job and the writers of Job and the people reading Job, they didn't have that yet. God bless their faith. May God bless you.